All right, we're going to do a quick tutorial on access control lists or ACLs. In this situation, this network is fully configured and connected. If you were to go on any given one of these devices, it can ping all of the other devices, no problem. But for whatever reason, we want to make it so that the 10.0.10.0 slash 24 network and everyone on that VLAN doesn't have access to the 10.0.30.0 network over here, but we still want the 10.0.20.10 to have access. Now, we can apply an ACL to accomplish this on either the incoming port or the outgoing port, and as the case may be, you might want to have access to the router here in case this is also the connection to your internet right there. But in this case, we're saying we don't want this subnet to have access to this router either. If that's the case, then we want to attach the access control list to the incoming port. To do this, first, we want to make certain that there's no access control lists active on this router. Since nothing showed up right there, there's nothing active right now. So let's go and add one. And this, the number for a standard access control list needs to be between one and 99. The order of the access control list matters, but in this case, it's a pretty simple access control list. All we really want to do is make certain before anything else happens, that 10.0.10.0 slash 24 subnet is blocked. And remember, this is a wildcard mask. Then, let's just permit everything. This makes it so all of the other subnets are automatically permitted. When it reads these lines, it will read the deny first and make certain that this subnet is denied before anything else. If it's not part of that subnet, it'll automatically permit everything else. Finally, we have to add this access list to an interface. As I mentioned, we're adding this to the incoming port. I already know that it's hooked up to gigabit zero slash one. In this situation, we could type either in or out, but we're not making reference to packets that are going out of this interface. We're making reference to packets that are coming into this interface. And that's it. That's the whole process for a numbered access list. To verify this, we can do that same ping. And notice the message is destination host is unreachable. In fact, the 1.2.23.2 IP address is assigned to the interface that we just attached the ACL to. Here's a ping to verify connectivity from VLAN 20. Let's see what this looks like as a named access list. First, we'll remove access list 1, then IP access list standard, and then add a name. Let's make it so only the VLANs and subnets that are in between are added to this access control list. So only those ones can access the subnet 10.0.30.0. And I don't know if this is strictly required, but for good measure, we're going to add on the 30 subnet as well. Now, like before, we still have to add it to the interface. And in this case, just to prove the point, let's go ahead and leave the 10 VLAN having access to that 1.1.1.3 router. That right interface I happen to know is already connected to G0 slash 2. And in this case, we're using out because it's the traffic leaving the router, not the traffic hitting the router. Any given interface can have both and in and an out ACL attached to it, but only one of each in and out. And let's go ahead and test again. As expected, it was denied again, but just to show that we have access to the router, 1.1.1.3 is the loop back on that third router, and we have perfect access to it. Likewise, this one should still have access. One last thing to point out real quick. When we show the access list, notice that the permits and denies are listed in the order that they'll take effect. If I had started this list with a permit any, then everything would have gotten through and it doesn't matter what else would have been there. They also end all of these lists with an implied deny any. So even though I don't have a deny listed here, everything that's not listed will be denied. And that's a good basic summary of standard access lists.